Oh dear me. Well, after what was an amazing month in August for solar generation, September is completely the opposite. Autumn is well and truly upon us and the solar generation has dropped dramatically. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar and today we're going to be talking about my September solar stats. Compared to last month, it's been a bit of a disaster. As a reminder of my system, I have 16 solar panels. I've got six on the east facing roof and 10 on the west facing roof. And I've combined that with a 9.5 kilowatt hour give energy gen 2 battery and a five kilowatt hybrid inverter also give energy as well. The system's been brilliant since I had it installed in December 2022. And despite it being a steep learning curve, I've really enjoyed the journey. And if you want to follow my journey, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel and also like this video if you find it useful as well. Let's get into the stats. So first let's start by looking at the total monthly solar generation. As you can see for this month, it was 346 kilowatt hours compared with 407 kilowatt hours from September last year. So 15% down on what we had and a massive drop, almost half as much from last month as well. So if we look at the next graph, this is the worst, best and average monthly generation. So as you can see, after all the peaks last month, much higher than previous year, we are a long way down now from last year. All three markers beneath the line of last year. And if we look in greater detail from the Give Energy chart, as you can see, we have generated 346 kilowatt hours this month. Just two of that went into the battery, charging that back up. Uh, 291 kilowatt hours went back to the grid as export, and 53 kilowatt hours went directly into the home. So I'm still on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, and that's combined with the outgoing export tariff. So I essentially pay seven pence per kilowatt hour to import my electricity overnight and charge the battery and my electric vehicle and then export everything back that the solar makes during the day at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So if you'd like a piece of that yourself and you'd like to join up to Octopus, if you use my referral link, you can split 100 pounds with me and that helps to support the channel. So you get 50 pound added to your account when you join Octopus. And if we look in greater detail at the best generation day, this was on the 16th of September, where we generated 24.03 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, not a bad day at all. So the maximum generation was about three kilowatts at around about two o'clock in the afternoon. And my battery stayed full most of the day and all that solar going back to the grid. And then I had my battery to discharge to around about 40% on the night time and then charge back up from half 11 on the cheap hours overnight. The worst day for generation was September the 30th where we only generated 1.01 kilowatt hours. So not great and as you can see the battery only lasted until about six o'clock in the morning and as the home started to draw on that power we dropped it down to around about 60% by the end of the day. And the maximum generation throughout the day was a whopping 258 watts. And as you can see, a pretty short short solar day just starting just before eight o'clock and had basically gone by six o'clock. If we move on to look at the grid import, and this is exactly the same figure we had last month, surprisingly. So 244 kilowatt hours drawing from the grid, 74 kilowatt hours of that went into the home and 169 went into charging the battery overnight. And you can see a bit of a change there towards the end of the month. So what I discovered last month was when I was exporting the battery down to 40% every night, although I was earning for more of that export during the day, what was actually happening was it wasn't using the eco mode during the day. And that was fine when there was enough solar in summer to keep my battery topped up and cover my house usage. But as the solar's dropped off now, I wanted to be using the battery during the day instead of drawing from the grid. So that change on the 26th of September is what you can see there just in the change in activity. Home consumption was again around about average and this doesn't include my electric vehicle charging. So this was 167 kilowatt hours and throughout the year we've averaged around about that up to 200 and down as low as maybe 150 kilowatt hours. Solar into the home was 53 Grid to the home, 74, and battery to the home was 39. And as you can see, about usual in terms of the usage, we had one high day on the 22nd of September. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but generally averaging between 3.9 and 11.3 kilowatt hours usage per day. And if we move on to look at the electric vehicle charging for September, according to my Zappi usage, I used 270 kilowatt hours to charge the EV battery. And as you can see, really low usage throughout summer when the battery is operating at warmer temperatures so much more efficient but now starting to increase again as we go into winter and there was quite a few more miles this month as well. On to grid export and I, I'm way down on where I was last month for August. 
I think I'd export 720 kilowatt hours back to the grid then. This month is only 405, so a long way down due to those darker, colder days. And again, as you can see there from the 25th of September, that pattern changing where I'm not exporting the battery back to the grid before I top it up again on a night. And I'm just basically letting the battery run down with what the house is using from the end of September. And if we look at the payback for the month, so consumption, as mentioned, was 167 kilowatt hours for the month of September. An import on the cheap rate around about just over hovering at seven pence per kilowatt hour on average. So that was 244 kilowatt hours again. And that equated, as mentioned, around about seven and a bit pence to 18 pounds and 53 pence cost for the month. The generation was 346 kilowatt hours and the export 405 exported back to the grid which equated to 60 pounds and 86 pence in earnings so if we didn't have any solar panels on our roof and we were just using the flexible tariff that would have cost me 35 pound and 68 pence for the month the cost with solar including the export was minus 42 pounds and 33 pence so a saving of 78 pound and one pence versus not having solar and being on the flexible tariff. And that takes our cumulative savings now to around about 2,258 since we had it installed at the end of December 2022 and a remaining payback of £8,721.45. As mentioned, I charged my electric vehicle with 270 kilowatt hours for the month, which equated to around about just £20.47. Diesel costs at my log garage have been around hovering around 140 ish, so 139 I've put in for this month, and that would have cost me around about £145 in my old diesel car, so a saving of about £125 for this month. And obviously, there's a lot of variables you can compare this with with a car, and I can't directly attribute this to the solar savings, but I like to include that and just see how much I'm saving versus my old diesel car. And if we add those together, that's £203 monthly savings. Cumulative savings, we're up to 4305 now. Remaining payback of 6674 And those bills for September, so the standing charge, £20.73 for electricity for the 30 days throughout September, and a charge of £39 for my home usage and also my EV charging. Export, we earned £60.86. The gas standard charge is £8.25 and we were charged £15.25 so we're starting to use the heat in much more now as the colder nights draw in. So we've had that on quite a few times throughout September. So that usage has gone up a little bit but still £15, not too bad for the month on the tracker tariff for gas. And that equates to a total bill of £22.57. So bearing in mind that's to charge my electric vehicle, heat the house, charge the battery and power my house. I don't think £22 for the month is too bad, but we're back in the territory of positive bills again, rather than Octopus paying us. So I think that's about it in terms of important things to say this month. A pretty miserable month in terms of weather-wise and solar generation-wise, but still £22 for the month, not too bad as we move into the autumn and winter months. Let me know how your solar system got on in the comments below. How much did you generate? Was September as bad where you are? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.